Peter, with the turbulent property market and what we're now hearing as negative equity in property, has this brought lending practices into closer scrutiny? Well, it certainly has. Um, buyers have to be careful when borrowing as to interest rates, etc., because as a recent um, case shows, the capitalisation of rates that are quite high can result in negative equity very quickly. These are penalty rates you're talking about? Well, in this particular case, a uh, default interest rate of 7.5% per month applied uh, to the um, property which was purchased in December 2009, just as some people thought the GFC was over its worst. So uh, that's a particularly high rate. Very high, but equates to about 90% a year, I think. Well, it was only intended as a short-term loan for this uh, um, investor who was, uh, had a day job as a nurse. Uh, but the 1.2 million uh, outstanding had to be refinanced, or she thought she could refinance it quickly, but that didn't transpire. So very quickly at that interest rate, things got out of hand and she went to the Supreme Court to get an order that the rate was too high and in fact was unconscionable. So she entered into an agreement, agreed to pay that rate, and then challenged it in the courts later when she can. She couldn't settle the property? Well, she agreed to pay a so-called standard rate of 4% per month, still pretty high, but uh, soon got into the default situation. So yes, she, her contract did say exactly that. That was her agreement. But she did seek relief under the Trade Practices Act that uh, it was unconscionable and the court exercised its jurisdiction in her favour. Oh, so the court ruled in her favour. So what was the final outcome? Well, she was successful enough to get the rate reduced, uh, the default rate reduced from 7.5% to 5% per month. Still a high rate and uh, we don't know what happened after that. Where would that have left the mezzanine lender in terms of their commitment to their investors? Well, the evidence was that the lender paid on average about 30% per annum to its investors. So um, the lender would still be well in front. Of course, it's a risky uh, business and we don't know, uh, you know what their mix of investments is and how often they completely lose out. How often would a case like this come up, Peter? Is this a fairly common place occurrence? We do see uh, Trade Practices Act claims um, on this subject uh, more frequently and uh, now, but this is a recent one for Queensland and one of the few that we've seen here. In standard contracts in Queensland, is there an allowance for this type of default interest? There is. It's very common to um, express it slightly differently. Well, how it's expressed is that there is a, uh, a, a standard rate a higher rate, say 14% um, per annum, uh, but if payments are made on time, the, the rate will be reduced to 8%. So uh, it's known in the industry as a default rate and a base rate, but legally it has to be expressed as a um, standard rate and a discount rate. So uh, that has been accepted uh, as a uh, reasonable commercial and legal practice for hundreds of years. This case that I just talked about has brought that into light again and the court has left open uh, the question as to whether or not it should be revisited but if so it'll have to be done at a much higher level than the High Court. Buyers of property uh, under a standard contract in Queensland uh, don't have any, need not have any fear of this uh, if they meet the terms of the contract? Standard uh, first tier borrowing through banks etc um, has much more reasonable interest rates, of course, for at consumer level. So there is not nothing for buyers to, to fear in particular.